I'm going to create a shell for my pirate ship scene, and I'm going to do that by bringing in a plane, rotate X90, and I'm going to add some edge loops, and I want to add a bunch of edge loops and have one in the middle, like that. That's probably good enough. I'm going to grab these ones and scale them in. I'll pull that up a little bit, and I'm going to scale this out so it just really flares out nicely. Take the whole thing and bring it up. And with these ones selected, I'm going to bring my 3D cursor there. Now I'm going to bring in a cylinder. It doesn't matter how many vertices, default vertices. Rotate X90. And the next thing I'm going to do is select these faces and inset just a little bit. Again, it doesn't really matter how much. And Control E, bridge edge loops. Now look from the front and look inside. And this region that is inside the cylinder is the part that's going to make our shell. So I'm just going to bring it up something like that and I'm going to shade smooth that select this part and do boolean with respect to the cylinder you can see a little gap there now that's what we want get rid of the cylinder come in here select the piece control L X vertices and that'll leave us sort of a shell shape and the reason I did it this way was so that I could get these nice straight lines here I'm going to select this M merge by distance. We got rid of one vertex. Okay, I'm going to look from the front, select it all, mesh, bisect, and drag a line through like that. Let's straighten it. S Z zero, and we have this. Go into edge selection and select this edge, and hold shift and that edge E and S X, and pull them out a little bit. And then one for vertex selection, and select these, and I'm going to pull them down a little bit. And then SX, pull them in a little bit so we have those pieces that stick off at the end. I'm going to grab these. In fact, I think I'm going to grab all of these and scale them in a little bit. Pull them down. I'm going to take just these ones. I'm bypassing those end ones. E to extrude, and I'm going to pull in, or down, sorry, and scale it in. Just like that. Something like that. Now, if I go Control 2, you can see the overall shape of the shell. I'm going to shut that off for the moment. As we come back here, there are a number of stray vertices, so I'm going to select those and get rid of them if they're not attached to these edges. I want to try very hard to get rid of all of them. We don't want them around. There we go. X dissolve vertices. Now I'm going to select every second vertex like that, and I'm going to press S to scale, pull them in, and then pull them down. And depending on how you do this and how much you do it, that will create a better shell for you. So I'm going to try a little bit more, an S, and we're just going to see. It's a little trial and error, so if I don't get the greatest shell, it's just the way it is. It looks a little bit like a leaf, I realize that. All right, those are selected there. What I'm going to do now is actually I'm going to scale them out a little bit. It's one away from that edge. Uh, I'm going to select the vertices that are connected to the ones that I've already got selected. So it's every second vertex, basically, like that. And then I'm going to push this out a nice distance to get something like that so far. Okay, I can shade smooth. So this is what my shell is looking like. So now it's time to just make sure that's done and Alt N, recalculate outside. Ah, my apologies. Were. So now it's time to give it some thickness. E and Alt S and push or pull. I guess I'll pull and pull it out. And you can see the thickness right, right here between the orange and the black. I'm going to drag an edge loop in and drag an edge loop down. So that may be a little exaggerated or maybe not. So. Hopefully that looks okay as a shell so far. All right, I'm going to apply the subdivision and look from the front. Come in and choose a central vertex. Turn on proportional editing and have it on sphere. And then push and just increase your size of your circle so that you can get the whole thing and just bend it nicely like that. And there is your shell. Okay, if you want, you can try another subdivision, and I think I will, and I'm going to apply it. All right, the next thing I want to do is I want to, the way I'll probably use this is probably have them hanging on a little string or something around a, I don't know, 
uh, around a post or something like that or maybe sitting on a necklace on a on the table so I'm just to, just to show you this I'm going to rotate Y 180 and turn that off and I'm going to pull this down to about there so my 3d cursor is right about there and I'm going to um, let's take this and just pull it back a little ways let's create like a little ring that, that would hold it so I'm going to do that out of a plane and the way I'll do it is I'll shift control B to bevel and start pulling and I'll press V no I'll press C let's do that again shift control B to bevel and press C to clamp make sure press C and they'll join like that and that's good enough select it all merge by distance and then just select that face and dissolve uh, delete only faces so I have that and uh, I'm gonna go into object move, move object mode and convert that to a curve and then I can quickly just give it some thickness and that's a quick way of creating a ring type structure and I'm going to want to rotate Y90 for that and we will uh, we'll pull it up so just imagine that's going through and just get the size that you think is reasonable for this so you know whatever <laughs> so maybe with something like that and I'm going to switch the resolution to 3 and I will convert that to a mesh and then I'm going to join it Control J and will shade smooth so everybody's happy and that's poking through we certainly have used some polys at this point let's see 23,000 well that's the way it goes up putting that extra subdivision on there now what I want to do is I want to select all my rings so I'll select a little bit of it and press Control L so let's actually select something and shift as cursor to select it. That's the 3D cursor is there. And I also want to, um, let's set the origin to the 3D cursor right there. Okay. So we're going to make this go on like a string, sort of like I did in the chains in the uh, dungeon corridor. I'm going to bring in a plane and it's going to come right in there. I'm just going to scale it down a little bit. So we have that plane in there. I'm going to select my shell with the ring and then after that select my plane and control P set parent to object. So I parented the shell to this. Come over here to instancing and choose faces and I've got another copy in there and I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to I'm going to pull it out like that. All right, so this is my original. I could even hide that. I won't do that yet. I'll get you out of there. And I'm going to add on to this an array. It's going to be in the X, but I'm not going to do relative. I'm going to do constant. And I'm just going to pull this until they're apart from each other. And I'll just bring up the count for the moment so you can see. They're all, well, they're all there. Okay. Uh, now, we're going to need a curve. Uh, so I'm just going to get make something sort of droop as if it's between two posts or something. So I'm going to look from the front, Shift A, Curve path that's going to come in I'm going to just scale it up bigger and I'm going to pull it so that the last point is pretty much uh, at at the beginning there and maybe I'll scale it a bit bigger in the X and pull it like that then I'm going to take these three points and just dangle them down and this is basically what I did with the chains before so I've got a path but I'll make this a little bit more convincing by giving it some depth so that it looks like a string or a rope part of a necklace or something all right so we've got that so now what we're going to do is select our guys here come back so we've got that array we've got constant offset i'm going to add a curve modifier and choose the curve and we've got our guys on there and i can come back here i can hide this and i can take this plane and we can come back to the instancing, okay, under here, and you can disable it from the viewport and the render when you when you render the thing. All right, so we got those hanging there, and just to show that it should work, if we come in here and we was were to extend this, like if I got E to extrude, uh, we should it should work. So why did it not work? Ah, fixed count, fit curve. What is the curve? Nerves path. There we go. All right, so if I come in here and I extend it, it'll keep making more. 
and you could have a string of seashells for some reason. Now there's other ways to twist them and, and, and make them a little bit less uh, regular, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. How are we doing with statistics? 24,000, okay, unless I start applying this stuff, so that's okay. Then I can just texture one and they'll all be textured. So that is my little string of shells. And I'll do something with that, or I might just make a pile of shells. I don't know. All right, when I come back, we've got to do that, that block out and get started on the actual room of the pirate ship. Take care.